Hey guys, I just wanted to uh, share a vision that I had in 2010 or 2011, several years back. Um, it's the only uh, real strong vision I've had. In fact, once it happened, I uh, I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning, and before I was even like awake, I was like sitting on my desk writing down everything that I had seen. And I remember once I uh, when I was writing everything down I had like this electricity coming down my spine up and down it was just the Holy Spirit just it felt like it was just pulsating it was so powerful the vision was very powerful um, it, you know I'll say right now it didn't show me any timing of a rapture I do believe in a pre-tribulation rapture um, but this dream was powerful and I don't have my notes in front of me and um, I, you know, I want to share now, you know, I had the vision and I wrote everything down and I shared it with a couple of people at the time and over the years I've shared it with people and, you know, it's funny, you know, for the last six or you know, six years or so, I've been wondering, what, you know, Father, what do you want me to do with this? Um, and I never got any real answers and I felt like it was such a powerful experience that I, I had to share it somehow, but now, you know, here it is, September 11th, 2017 and I'm, People are having visions all over the world right now and they're seeing the rapture and the tribulation and they're uploading it or sharing it. So to me, it's a sign like I need, you know, God, I feel like the Father's telling me I need to finally share this. And, you know, YouTube, you have so much reach online, you know, even if you only get 500 views, that's more than um, I could have ever shared with, you know, anyone in person. So anyways, I'll get to this. So basically during that time when I had the vision, uh, I was trying to read the Bible from start to finish. I was just at a time where I was just really trying to seek God. I didn't have a girlfriend or anything at the time. It was just like alone time with me and God and everything, you know, it was just a good, anyways, I started with Genesis. My goal was to get to Revelation. I was just going to, I was eating it up every night. And on this particular night, I was in the middle of the book of Isaiah. And I remember that night I actually fell asleep reading the book. Normally I put the Bible away when I go to sleep and, you know, and fall and pass out. But this specific night, I don't even remember falling asleep. I just, I fell asleep. And so there's five. So the, the way this vision happened is um, there was like, it was kind of sporadic. There was different scenes. Okay. Um, like five different scenes and they were random and they seemed symbolic. They might've been literal. In fact, they were probably literal, but it's just funny how, you know, the Father uses symbology in a lot of his visions and dreams. I think some of it, well, you're, you'll hear, some of it was symbolic. And so these are not necessarily in order. I don't have my notes in front of me, but it's, it's heavy stuff, okay? So the first thing I saw, the first thing I'll share anyway, is I was on an airplane. And if you looked out the window, it was like a 737, a big airplane. And you looked out the window, and everyone on the plane was scared, okay? The end of the, it was Armageddon outside. You could see comets coming down. There was fire. The, everything looked orange. It was terrifying. And I stood up on the plane. All the, the plane was packed, okay? There must have been several hundred people. And it just seemed like mostly men were on the plane. I don't know if that means anything, but it was... The people on the plane were symbolic of like atheism and these were all atheists and unbelievers and I stood up on the plane in this vision and I was screaming I was like you have to repent this is it it's happening it's going down right now can't you see everything around you we're going down and in fact the plane was actually going down and we all knew it too that was part of it like the plane was crashing and but we're still in the air at the time so I'm standing up yelling I was like you need to repent this is it guys can't you see and I'll never forget um, the look on their faces. They knew something was wrong. They knew this was not right. They were scared. Uh, they were terrified, but they still were not accepting Christ. Like they would not cross over that line. And I was screaming. And then before I knew it, the plane was on the ground and it was crashed and there was wreckage everywhere. And I was walking away from the wreckage, fine. And there was only one person walking away with me. It was actually a female. And it, I, I believe it was symbolic of, of that whole plane that was going down. Only one person accepted and repented the message. And it was kind of sobering to me. And to me, that might have been like the end of the tribulation. God really squeezing people, getting the most. Get, he's going to go to the farthest lengths just, to make, just for that last person, I believe. I think that's what that was symbolic of. But while we're on the plane, let me back up a little bit. Um, I remember looking out the window and I seen some angels escorting a soul up to heaven and they looked like stars. 
the angels, there was like four or five stars, bright stars, and they were on a, like a glide slope headed up into the atmosphere, and they were surrounding a human soul who was also a star. And of course, that might be literal, that might be symbolic. I don't know what it looks like in the spirit. It could be stars, but they were certainly escorting a soul up to heaven. And it was a really surreal thing to see because it wasn't just like stars floating. They were like, they looked like fighter jets or something like on a glide slope headed up. And it was really, really powerful. It was one of those things you see, it takes your breath away. That's another thing about this vision. Everything had so much emotion attached to it, like feelings that you couldn't really feel in the flesh. Like everything was so heavy and so severe and it gets even crazier, okay? So that's one part of the vision. The, the next crazy thing that I saw was, um, we were standing like on a dock and we we're overlooking the ocean. I live by the beach and uh, anyways, we we're standing on a dock and we could see the ocean and all the sea life was on the surface of the ocean. The whales, there was these big gray whales that looked like, might have been blue whales, big massive creatures and they were flailing and kicking their fins and they were creating so much waves and turbulence and all the people were on the dock just staring at this like in shock, like what is going on? This is so terrifying. And I just remember all the sea life, all the wildlife was in panic. And it was so heavy. I cannot describe to you, it's not just the visual that freaks you out. It's the, uh, the heaviness of seeing it. Um, there's some just this heavy, heavy emotion seeing this. Anyways, these massive creatures were all on the surface, just kicking and flailing. And then the next thing I saw, I was like floating over the surface of the ocean, looking straight down. And there was like a, sh a shield, like a glass over the surface of the ocean. And this is going to sound morbid, but it's, it's severe and terrible. But there was all these humans trapped under the gla this glass and they, there was no air between the glass and the ocean like this. The ocean was butted up against the glass. And, and all these, like a lot of them were dead. Some of them were still alive. And I remember looking over and there's this one dude looking straight up at me with his eyes open and um, he was either dead or he was about to be dead and there was just as far as you could see there was just there was just death um you know the four horsemen um death is one of the horsemen and it's going to be se severe and terrible and i believe that's one of the reasons why god has to remove his church um before this all goes down so anyways I'm not, i don't want to in interject personal stuff opinions into this this is just a vision testimony that i saw but there was all these people trapped under the glass and they couldn't get out and there was no escape for them um, and it was just, uh, it was really heavy. And then the other part of the dream was, uh, God's presence just showing up on the planet. And let me tell you, I think I, I felt on a small level what it's going to be like when God's presence is going to be exposed. It was so heavy. It was thick in the air. Like you don't even, my face is on the ground on this, in this dream. And I did not even want to look up. And I could feel literally, this is before I knew about the verse in the Bible. I don't have the verse chapter off my head, top of my head, but I could feel even the rocks were like shaking in terror, terror, um, everything. I mean, let me tell you, there's not going to be any doubt on the face of the planet. Who is God when that day comes? I don't know if that was the return of the Lord at the end of the tribulation or what it was, but his presence. I don't care if you go a thousand miles underground in a bunker in a tunnel, you will not be able to escape this Terri terrifying presence and pow the power is so crazy I cannot put it into words but you cannot escape this it, and I, I, I also felt like yes I get why God is so reserved right now why people he lets people just run to and fro and blaspheme his name on this planet because on that day when he does reveal himself it's going to be so severe and so powerful it makes sense why he had to wait on something like this because it's I don't feel like it's something that God takes lightly either obviously he doesn't because when he does pour out his wrath it's going to be it's so so terrifying now for us his children we're on the other side of that but I think God gave me a glimpse of what it might feel like for that person who's still on the planet when the return happens um, but I'm telling you like you don't even want to look up like it's uh, you just want to just bury your face in the ground and you can't even think you can't even breathe it's just overwhelming anyways guys I just wanted to say that before this rap this uh, vision happened that uh, I wasn't really asking for a vision I don't remember asking for a vision it was just something that came to me since then I've asked for a vision and I haven't gotten really 
I mean, I've had some mini revelations. Just I've seen like you know in dreams like the stars falling in the sky at different times. Uh, and one other time, I I had a dream where everyone was looking up, you know, and there was the stars were falling from the sky, like literally like raindrops. And everyone was looking up, like what is going on? And it was just like stuff like that that showed me that God's just gonna so. Uh, humble like these these proud scientist type atheists that just they feel like they understand the universe and the cosmos so well th th these days God's going to sh shake up so much stuff that it's going to be undeniable there's not going to be any scientific or physical explanation for what's happening in the skies and you know I th things are already happening in the skies people I mean we're in a time right now you know Revelation 12 you know I believe is a, a perfect illustration of God taking his church home um, especially specifically Revelation 12 verse 5 um, God's gonna snatch the baby uh, it's it's everything's coming down the pike it's on September 23rd there's an urgency right now um, I, I, I've just never felt so much intensity and pressure like we're feeling right now and it's not obvious as I know you guys are feeling it it's a collective God's children it's that it's the birth pains, and that's what Revelation 12 is about. It's, you know, it's funny, for years we've been talking about the birth pains, um, the birth pains of when things are close, and only recently has God really poured out Revelation. I believe that unsealed prophecy is, or sealed prophecy is being unsealed right now. Just lately have we just come to understand that it's Revelation 12, the woman giving birth. It, those are the birth pains, guys. I mean... This is insane right now. I'm, I've been, we've, all of you, I know you guys have been feeling it too. This is almost, it is overwhelming. I mean, I don't even, this is an amazing time right now, guys, for, for God's children, his sons and daughters, um, the church. Um, you know, we're going home, you guys. And, you know, if it goes down the 23rd or not, it's, it's close. It's imminent. Um, like it's never been before. And we're going to enjoy the wedding feast and paradise. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, um, and you know, from my vision that I had personal, my personal thing on this is you do not, we do not want to be here for the tribulation. Um, I keep saying the word severe and terrible, but it will be severe and terrible. Um, you know, a lot of, I, I know a lot of people out there are like, yeah, I'll, I'll just tough it out. You know, we'll head to the mountains. I, I got my guns and my bullets. You know, it's like, I don't think we even understand um, how terrible this time is going to be. And that's why God is, is, is shaking the planet right now. He's trying to get people to wake up and repent. And another thing, I feel, I feel like it's been a revelation. I'm going to do more videos too because I have, we all have a lot to say. Um, I, and, you know, but another revelation is that, uh, you know, we've been telling, I've been telling people about the signs and everything that's happening, but God's been showing me and other people too, God is really looking for, our Father is really looking for repentance right now. He's looking for repentance from people because that's what's repenting and accepting Christ is what's going to save you. No other God is going to save you. And there are other gods out there, but there is only one, one God. And, um, and he's quick to save. He's, his forgiveness comes easy. Um, his, his burden is light. He paid the price for us, guys, on the cross. He already did all the dirty work. It's, it's up to us just to accept that free gift. And he's handing it out freely right now. And people are waking up and people are getting saved. Um, but it is a free gift. It's not about church. It's not about going. It's not about religion. It's certainly not about religion. It was the religious Pharisees that murdered Jesus on the cross, you guys. So that should tell you everything you need to know about Christ and religion. Um, in fact, Jesus came to set us free from religion. He came to set us free from the law and from the bondage and from the rules. Um, the gift is free that he's offering and we're running out of time. Um, there will be believers here on the planet during the tribulation and I believe they will go to be with the Lord um, throughout the tribulation. But, you know, if if you can miss that, you, it's definitely better. Um, we want to get on the boat now because it's, it's getting ready to leave the harbor and uh, we don't want to be on that dock and waving by to the boat because it's going to be scary. So anyways, um, I just want to share what I my experience was. Um, several years back, pretty heavy stuff. It's it actually, I mean, it literally changed my life. Um, it added a dimension to just feelings and emotions that I didn't think were possible on this planet, just of heaviness and, and terror and power, just pure, unrefined, raw power. Um, that's who our father is, guys. Um, anyways, I love you all. 
my brothers and sisters in Christ. I look forward to seeing you all soon in paradise. We're almost there, guys. All right, I'll see you soon.